Welcome in to the Mason Talks Cleveland Browns post game show. Today is Sunday, September 12th, 2021, and the Cleveland Browns just blew a halftime lead to lose to the Kansas City Chiefs 33 to 29. Now, this game was a bummer, but I am not going to freak out because you know what? I'm learning. I am learning that week one is not the end all be all. This is not the end of the world. And quite frankly, last year's week one was significantly worse for the Browns. If you remember, we got embarrassed by the Baltimore Ravens. And you know what? This wasn't an embarrassing game for the Browns. I thought there were definitely some positives we could take away. But it also showed that this team is still flawed in certain areas. And the first thing I want to look at is the Browns defense. The Browns defense did not do enough to beat the Chiefs. And I I, I thought a lot of the players looked better than what we had last year. Obviously, um, John Johnson, the third, looked a lot better than, you know, Andrew Sandejo and company. Um, You know, looking at our cornerbacks, I thought, Denzel Ward did a great job. He had multiple pass breakups. Um, Anthony Walker looked like a leader out there. But your pass rush wasn't that great for the majority of the game. Uh, Nick Chubb and Jadavian Clowney had a kind of, you know, combo sack there at the end. But outside of that, Garrett and Clowney did not really lay their hands on Patrick Mahomes. We weren't able to contain him as a mobile quarterback. He, he, he seemed to be able to get out of the pocket and run for a first down w- whenever he pleased. And there were still some moments where it was like, hey, they're just not really a complete, gelled together, solid, disciplined unit. And and one of the the dumbest moments of this game um, came from Ronnie Harrison uh, right right in the, I think it was first quarter, ran out of bounds, got shoved by a, a Chiefs coach, which that Chiefs coach should have gotten ejected, um, and then he shoved the coach. Shouldn't have shoved the coach back. But the coach shouldn't have shoved him. I mean, what was the co- what was that Chiefs coach doing? Shoving a player, walking onto the field, shoving a player. But it just shows that hey, if you're Ronnie Harrison, you should have just ignored the dude because ultimately, ultimately, I think the Browns w- needed him. Um, and and maybe the outcome would have been a little bit different on some of those drives. But the defense just isn't a cohesive unit yet. And and the Chiefs, quite frankly got to do whatever they pleased pretty much the entire game. I think we only stopped their 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 offense from scoring one time. And we sure didn't stop Patrick Mahomes. The dude went 337 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. He still has not thrown a pick in the month of September. Um and he was only sacked twice. So I I, I would you know I'm gonna I, I don't wanna play the blame game but I'm blaming the defense. I think if the defense had stepped up a couple of times throughout that game, you know what? Maybe we would have won. But it's a lot to ask because it's the Kansas City Chiefs, and they've got they they've got the best offense in the National Football League. And uh, shifting gears to to the Browns' offense, I think we saw a lot of encouraging signs from the offense in that first half. The Browns' offense was darn near unstoppable, and it was mostly on the backs of of Nick Chubb and and Kareem Hunt. Nick Chubb was a beast per usual. He had two touchdowns, 83 rushing yards. Kareem Hunt was out there dominating as well against his his old team. He had 33 yards and a touchdown. But again, um just those little little moments that that you can't little slip up moments you can't have against the Chiefs uh the Nick Chubb fumble I that's really where I said okay this is this is probably it that's where I gave up uh the Nick Chubb fumble I was like you know this you can't you can't do that against the Chiefs you can't slip up I mean this was a neck and neck game until the Baker Mayfield interception that's really when the first time you were able to safely say you know the Chiefs are going to win this it was a neck and neck game you can't have little instances of of stupidity and the Browns did um and part of that is that they are not as experienced of a winning team as the Chiefs are the Chiefs have been uh pretty much successful every year under under Andy Reid obviously they've been to two Super Bowls they've won one but if you want to be the best and if you want to win a Super Bowl you got to beat the best you got to beat the Chiefs and from what we've seen recently the Browns have shown that they can't do that um so they have to clean things up and and 
I, I would say the number one area that needs to clean things up and get their act together is is our special teams. Because we're truly getting nothing from special teams. Uh, kick returners are... Uh, we, we, don't, we don't return kicks. I mean, I, I've never seen an NFL team so incapable of returning kicks. We had Demetric Felton back there. The dude couldn't do anything. We had that one really confusing punt moment where uh, the ball bounced into the Browns' uh, one-yard line and then Donovan Peoples-Jones touched it i don't know what the heck happened. one of the chiefs touched it first so it was it, it was down by contact there but donovan people's jones busted in there i thought we were gonna give up a touchdown right there um and then the biggest moment the worst moment jamie gillen's punt fumble which gave the chiefs the ball back within like 10 yards of scoring a touchdown and of course if, if you give the chiefs the ball at the at the five yard line of all places and, and a fresh set of downs of course they're gonna go in and score um chase mclaughlin hit one uh extra point but gosh he barely hit that extra point i think did he hit one or did he hit multiple extra points i have no idea but like a, a mess i mean the special teams unit is a mess and it needs to be cleaned up if you want to be a super bowl caliber team now I, let me hit on some 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 positives that we can take away from this um number one I, I thought that overall Baker Mayfield looked pretty good. And this is, I think the Baker Mayfield thing is interesting because he went out there today. He went 21 for 28, 321 yards, um, no touchdowns, and an interception. So it was a good game from Baker. I mean, for the majority of this game, he was moving the ball down the field. He was putting his team in position to score. Um, he only had one slip up and that was the interception. That was really the only bad thing he did today or yeah, in today's game, except for maybe the underthrown pass to David Njoku. It was a good game from Baker. He had some really good throws, but ultimately zero touchdowns and the best quarterbacks in the league throw touchdowns and the best quarterbacks in the league lead their team down the field at the end of the game to, to, you know, uh, score points and win the game. I mean, look at that thursday night game the other day how the cowboys gave the buccaneers the ball back with like two minutes left and brady led the team down the field and, and they kicked the game winning field goal i mean the best quarterbacks in the league can move the ball down the field and i don't think we've seen that from baker yet in a clutch moment except for the game against the Bengals, where he threw the touchdown to donovan peoples jones um just throwing it out there we haven't seen it from baker yet and obviously i love baker mayfield i think he's a great quarterback but we need to see him step up in those moments and if he can't um that's going to be a that's that's going to be an issue of concern because you can run the crap out of the football with, with, with your two stud backs and nick chubb and kareem hunt but at the end of the day when you need seven points and you've got two minutes to get 80 yards down the field to do it it's on the quarterback you can't run the ball at that point it's got to be on baker mayfield um also, I, th I thought overall our offensive weaponry looked pretty good. Jarvis looked good. He had a touchdown run. That was a creative little play there. Um, David Njoku had some big catches. The biggest surprise to me, and this is something that I talked about in the pregame show yesterday, Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, did not play. OBJ didn't play. And I was discussing, well, then who would get the starter reps? Would it be Donovan Peoples-Jones or would it be Rashard Higgins? It was Anthony Schwartz, and he did a pretty good job. I mean, he 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 had the play at the end where he didn't uh, get the catch, which obviously was a disappointment. But he did he he had a couple of receptions. I think he had three three receptions for uh, sixty nine yards, and his long reception of the day was forty four yards. He also had a seventeen yard run. Anthony Schwartz looked good. He looked fast. And he was a starter for this team, which surprised me because I did not think he was going to be getting starter reps, especially game one against the Chiefs. But clearly the Browns are confident in him. Clearly they believe that his speed is something that can torment other teams. And I'll be interested to see just how uh, much of a facet of this offense he's going to be because we didn't see much of Rashard Higgins at all i don't think he got on the field that much we really didn't see much of donovan people's jones either so maybe anthony schwartz is actually going to be a piece for this offense but you know looking at this game and looking into the future this is not the end of the world this is 
probably something that most people expected because it's the Kansas City Chiefs. They're, they're the best team in football. But going forward, the Browns have to rally back. And th- luckily, we have Kevin Stefanski. I trust in his ability to rally the troops and get get them ready for week two. Luckily, we have the, the Houston Texans coming up in week two, which should be a win um, because it's the Houston Texans. I know they thumped Urban Meyer's Jaguars today, but that that doesn't really count. I mean, you should be able to beat – if you get beaten by, by Tarod Taylor and the Texans – uh, you may as well just hang everything up there and call it a call it a year. So you know next week, the Browns should have a good opportunity to get things back in order, really get the win behind them. And if their offense can play next week like they did in the first half of this game, and if the Browns defense can get a little bit more pressure from you know your front four defensive linemen then that should be a no-doubt victory, and hopefully you can continue from there on, get that momentum, um, and win some games. And, you know, it could be a little awkward because we could be sitting at dead last in the AFC North next week, depending on what the Ravens do against the Raiders on Monday Night Football tomorrow. But you know what? Doesn't matter. This doesn't matter that much. It was the Chiefs. You put up a good fight, good effort, everybody. Blew it at the end. But you know what? We can bounce back and I I think they will. Let me know in the comments, what did you think of this game? Do you think the Browns will be able to bounce back next week, and who do you think needs to step up? The defense, the pass rush, Baker, whomever. Uh, Thanks for listening to the Mason Talks, Cleveland Browns postgame show. I'll see you in my next episode. Goodbye.